So we're moving through Ephesians chapter 4, 4, 14 to 16, a commentary. So always good to go back and review a little bit. So in Ephesians 4, 11 to 13, it's stated that the purpose of the spiritual gifts of apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, that's not a complete list, was so that the body of Christ could attain to the unity of the faith all together and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a mature man, to the measure of the statue, stature, which belongs to the fullness of Christ. Whereupon in Ephesians 4, 14 and 16, it continues, that we should know, see, it's, it's a continuous sentence. Paul has these long run-on sentences. You have to pay attention because there's a lot to be said, and I think that's the only way to present it. He was inspired by the Holy Spirit. So it continues, that we should no longer be children, tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of men and the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting, but speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in all aspects into him who is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body, being fitted and held together by what every joint supplies, according to the proper working of each individual part, causes the growth all of this causes the growth of the body for the building up of itself, after all, in, in all in all, in agape, self-sacrificial love. This is important. Sad to say, the church has not succeeded all that well throughout the ages. They are hung up on temporal life and not on the spiritual life. And it is by his grace and sovereignty that God will himself bring about this spiritual progress in the body of Christ, despite the flawed nature of each and every member through the spirits working through the inner man within each believer. Some progress, yes. I would say more minutiae little things that God credits you, and more than would be demonstrated at rapture, resurrection time for the church. So, Here are the verses we're looking at, 14 to 16, that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men, and the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. That's what men do. And church largely has gone along with that. But speaking, literally holding to or being truthful in the truth in love, agape love, we are to grow up, literally let us grow up in all aspects into him who is the head, even Christ from whom the whole body being fitted and held together, literally through every joint of the supply, by what every joint supplies, according to the literally working in measure, the proper working of each individual part, causes the growth of the body for the building up of itself in godly agape love. That's our direction. That's our uh, directions via Paul's writing in his epistle and the rest of Scripture. So author and apostle Paul wrote in Ephesians 4, 11 to 13 that the purpose of the spiritual gifts of apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers was so that the body of Christ could attain to the unity of the faith. I notice when you talk to fellow believers, uh, they all seem to have a different idea of what the faith of, of Scripture and the faith of salvation and the faith of growing and maturing in the faith is all about. And uh, that means a lacking in following these orders, utilizing these spiritual gifts. And we're to attain the knowledge of the Son of God to a mature man to the measure of the stature which belongs to the fullness of Christ. <clears throat> then further, <coughs> 14 to 16, which I quoted, that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men, trickery of men in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting but speaking, holding to or being truth in the truth in love, we are to grow up, let us grow up in all aspects of, into him, who is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body, being fitted and held together through every joint of the supply, by what every joint supplies, according to the literally working in measure, or the proper working of each individual part, which causes the growth of the body for the building up of itself in love. And if God is sovereign, and he is, he will bring about this spiritual progress despite the flawed nature of each and every individual member of the church. 
the body of Christ through the Spirit's working, through the inner man within each believer received at the point of faith alone in Christ alone. Sad to say, I look at most Christians there and myself, and we're so enmeshed in the temporal life, we, want, we need to go beyond our six senses, go to Scripture, and follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. However, God will bring it to a conclusion. Compare Colossians 3, 8 to 11. Paul, having written in Colossians 3, 8 to 9, but now you yourselves are to put off all the sins, of these sins, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. Do not lie to one another. Since you have put off the old man, i.e. the old sin nature, with his evil deeds, moves, this moves to Colossians 3, 10 to 11, wherein the believer is now putting on the new man in the sense of the new nature, which by his grace and God provided, by his grace God provided within the believer at the moment of faith alone in Christ alone by the baptism of the Holy Spirit, who is the agent who has put within the believer the new man, the inner man, who is renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created the believer, namely God. This is a renewal in which there will be no distinction between Greek and Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave, and free man, but Christ is all in all. We all have our function. So we're to put off all these things, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. These are the coarse things out of the, the, in the Christian life, all, all the human lives that uh, are enslaved to the sin nature from moment to moment or throughout if you're not a believer. And he goes on to say, do not lie to one another since you have put off the old man with his disease, deeds. Evil is implied here because it is described by Romans in Romans 6, 6 as the body of sin. And Colossians 10, and put on the new man who was renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him. A renewal in which there is no distinction between Greek and Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave and free man, but Christ is all in all. So Paul, having written in Colossians 3, 8 to 9, but now you yourselves are to put off these things, and so on. He moves again to the believers putting on the new man in the sense of the new nature, which, by his grace, God provided within the believer at the moment of faith alone in Christ alone. All the tools are there via the baptism of the Holy Spirit who is the agent who has put within the believer the new man. Now, that the putting off of the old sin nature was done by God to the believer at the point of faith alone in Christ alone as well, in the sense that the sin nature no longer has absolute control over the individual, although the believer can reinstate that control moment to moment. Sad to say, that's been the case for at least nearly 2,000 years. However, the believer can and may still resubmit himself to that control moment to moment. So, as I said, so the new nature, the inner man, is characterized as having the righteousness of God, which was provided within the believer through the work of the indwelling Holy Spirit, which is also characterized as constantly being renewed in knowledge as you keep studying the Word of God according to the image of Jesus Christ who created him and following the leading of the Holy Spirit, referring to the new man within the believer. Note <clears throat> that the agent who is doing the renewing of the new man cannot be the believer himself because he still possesses a sin nature, cannot be trusted, right? Which the believer may and often does activate. 1 John 1, 8, and 9, and 10 especially. If you say you have not sinned, you're a liar. Here it is, 1 John 1, 1, John 1 8. If we say that we have no sin, we're deceiving ourselves, and the truth is not in us. We have to confess our sins, and then God is faithful and righteous to forgive us those sins we confess and purify us, cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Then we say in verse 10, 1 John 1, 10, if we say that we have not sinned from moment to moment, we have made God out to be a liar, and his truth is not in us. And we do that all the time. It's a matter of, boy, how is God going to, how are we going to get through this without God? So, so the believer does not have the perfectly righteous nature of God in order to be qualified to do that renewing according to the image of Jesus Christ. Finally, in Colossians 3.11, Paul writes a renewal in which there is no distinction between Greek and Jew, circumcised 
an uncircumcised barbarian, Scythian, slave, and free man. But Christ is all in all. <clears throat> it's interesting to note that despite the discord amongst believers in their mortal lives and throughout the world, we will all be renewed to the extent that there will be no distinction between Greek and Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave, and free man. But Christ is all in all. Now we have Jewish Christians uh, bitter against uh, Gentile Christians, and we have different societal, uh, temporal uh, scenarios where one overrides the other, even though we're all in Christ. So all believers will act in godly harmony with one another and in unity of purpose as part of the body of Christ, each one doing his part. Look at 2 Cor 4, 16 and 18. We are not to lose heart. Though the outer man, temporal body, is decaying, yet our inner man is being renewed by God day by day, producing for us an incomparable eternal weight of glory. I wish I could be encouraged with that. I, uh, I'm so discouraged with this temporal life as I grow older. Thus, I keep my nose in the, the Bible as much as I, I maybe more I should, uh, but as much as I, I am, uh, doing these YouTubes and adding to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and so on. Thus we are to look not at the things which are seen, the temporal life which are temporal and fleeting, but at the things which are not seen and eternal. Get that through the temporal Bible, which is written in temporal language, that we can then get the spiritual message, which focuses on our eternity. Here's 2 Cor 4.16. Therefore we do not lose heart, but through our outer man, though, though our outer man is decaying, yet our inner man is being renewed day by day. So in view of the believer's possession, of a sin nature, thus renewing day by day, must be God's work alone. We're just flawed. For momentary light affliction is producing for us an eternal weight of glory far beyond all comparison. Thank God, God is working in me. While we look not at all at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Get in touch with eternity. Through the temporal words of God's word, studying it, thinking about it, that's all temporal activity, and God will focus us on eternity. 2 Cor 4, 16 to 18, has especially in view eternity, when the believer will have been completely transformed in the image of Jesus Christ throughout his body, and throughout his soul, and throughout his spirit, especially within his transformed mind, which will no longer be influenced by the old man, resurrection, I see that, his old sin nature, which has been removed, but by the new man within him received at the point of faith alone in Christ alone and to eternal life. For the sin nature that the believer in his temporal body was so attached to in his mortal life will no longer be present in his resurrection body in eternity. This is the struggle in this temporal life which all believers face. The attachment that they have to the old sin nature is such that they must endeavor with great effort to look to eternity when their new godly natures will be fully in control in the absence of the old sin nature, to the time when they will have become fully knowledgeable according to the image of Jesus Christ who created that new nature, that renewal, within the believer through the work within him of the Holy Spirit. It must be that in an instant when we were raptured, dead in Christ, and we alive, raised up, receive our resurrection body. In that instant, everything is perfected. Thank God for that, because I'm doing a mess of it, a terrible job in my temporal life, as most Christians are. So we will have become fully knowledgeable according to the image of Jesus Christ who created that new nature, that renewal within the believer, through the work within him of the Holy Spirit. It will be a renewal in which there is no distinction between Greek, non-Jew, and Jew, nor circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave, and free men, but Christ is all in all. We are all part of his body to function in eternity with his perfect righteousness. Thank God. With joy should we continue in the faith. So despite the incapacity of all believers to successfully accomplish their own personal perfection in Christ during their temporal lives, nevertheless, according to the sovereignty and grace of God and the work of the indwelling Holy Spirit, the inner man will prevail and all members of the body of Christ will be ready for eternity, albeit there is promised momentary light affliction, which is producing for us an eternal weight of glory far beyond all comparison with anything in this temporal life. So more on this when we get to verses 17 to 19. 